oceans deep, our faith will stand. Mighty God, oh, oh, oh. Take me deeper than my 
feet my feet my feet my feet made stronger made stronger in the presence of my savior spirit lead me where my trust is without borders let me walk Refreshing. Praise the gospel around this world. I pray for anointing. Yeah. Praise your name, Lord God. Anointing. Trust without borders, Father, God. that's what we want in our lives, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord God, let me trust you, Father, in each area of our lives, Lord God, with our families, Lord, with our jobs, with our money, Lord God, each and every part of our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, refill, I pray. Keep my eyes above the way. Come on, who wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit this morning? Who needs a fresh touch? Just reach out. His presence is here. Come on, His presence is here. His presence is here. Who needs healing this morning? Who needs healing this morning? His presence, His glory is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hiyadaba. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, if God has given you the a language that you never learned, just all across this room, can we begin to praise Him in that language? I don't do this often, but come on. Let's just begin to worship Him in the Spirit this morning. His presence is here. He can teach more on the glory of God in a few minutes than I can in my lifetime because we're experiencing the glory of God this morning. Oh, mighty God. Lord, we worship you, God. Lord, just sweep through this place, Almighty God. Sweep through this place. Somebody else needs something from the Lord this morning. Number one, if you're here in this room and you don't have a relationship or you're not in right relationship, and can I tell you something? The world wants to tell you that you can still live in sin and still be a Christian. Becoming a Christian is becoming like Christ, and that is a rejection of sin. 
We've got to get rid of the sin in the church. It's not okay. It's not okay. We have to reject it. We've got to look different than the world. We've got to act different. We've got to talk different. We've got to watch different things on the television. We've got to have different interests. We've got to reject those things. Too much right now in our society, people want to say, well, is it acceptable for me as a Christian to do this? What we should be asking is what Paul says, everything may be acceptable, but not everything is good for us. And not everything is a good testimony. So what we need to be asking is not, can I get away with this? How close can I get to sin without going to hell? What we need to start saying is, God, help me to shun every appearance of what could be evil. Every appearance. It's time that the church restore holiness, separation. God is totally and awe-inspiringly other. And I preached on that last week in the glory of God the first time. He is so far above. He transcends everything. He is so holy that if you stood in His presence, you would die as a physical person. And yet we want to see, I'm a Christian, but I want to see how close I can get to this action without going to hell. What we should be saying is, I want to see how close I can get to Christ before I make it to heaven. And reject those things in your life. If you've got an addiction, lay it before the Lord. He knows about it. We don't condemn you. As a church, we uplift you. And we say that the power of Almighty God is able to break the addictions. If you're here in this room and you've had an addiction in your life broken, can you raise your hand right now? I want you to look around. Look around. God can deliver you. It's time that the church begin to reject things like social drinking. We don't need alcohol. We have Jesus. That's one of those things where people can argue with me and say, well, the Bible doesn't say you'll go to hell for drinking. No, it doesn't. But it does say you'll go to hell for being drunk. And it does say that if you cause another brother to stumble, that sin is on your head. And so it is a witness of Jesus Christ in our life. God has delivered some of you from alcohol. Someone else in the room, you may be on the other side and say, I need Jesus to deliver me from alcohol. See, what good does it do me to stand in the pulpit as a pastor and preach and to counsel with an alcoholic who is struggling day in and day out with that? And then they go to Applebee's and they see me behind a bar drinking a beer. It shatters my witness. Some of you may struggle with bad language or other things that aren't necessarily things that I would say will condemn you to hell, but just things that you say in your own life. You know what? I want to get this out of me. Just the Lord is working on me and I want to stop this. Whatever that is, there's a whole host of things. God can deliver you from cigarettes. We don't condemn anyone that comes into this church and is still struggling with smoking. But God can deliver you if you reach out to Him and the glory of the Lord is present in this place. There are multitudes of people in this room this morning that have been delivered from cigarettes. Again, if nothing else, it's just not good for you. It's abusing the temple that God has given you. We need to separate ourselves this morning, church, and say, you know what, I want to return my life to a life of holiness and say, you know what, here I am. If it's in my life, God, and you don't want it in there, show me what it is, and I will trust you to deliver me. Show me. Some may be a bad attitude. How many teenagers are in the room this morning? Not to pick on you guys. But it's the age. Some of you may be dealing with anger. God can deliver us. He can deliver us. So if you're here this morning with the glory and the presence of Almighty God moving in this place, 
and you say, there is something in my life that I want to be delivered from. Nobody's going to ask you what it is unless you want to tell the person that's praying over you. It's none of our business. That's between you and God. We're not here to condemn you. And I believe most of you know that we don't condemn you. We love you just the same. But if you're here this morning and you say there's something in my life and I'm tired of fighting this, I'm ready for deliverance. I want you to get up from where you are and I want you to come to the front right now and we're going to pray over you for just a moment. Come on. If you guys here in the middle would kind of just separate and allow those that want to have deliverance to come here to the middle. Those that want to have deliverance, if you would come to the middle. Come on, who else? Come on, who else? Now, what I want to have right now is Bill, Vernon, Sammy, some of you guys that have been delivered from things, I want you to come and I want you to begin to pray over these. We want freedom in this place. The glory of God is here. Come on, church, just gather around these and let's begin to pray over them. Father, we love you. God, you know whatever it is that these are struggling with. God, you also know that we do not condemn them because it's just part of life. But we also know that there is freedom through Christ Jesus, our Savior. So God, I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever it is, whatever it is that you would begin to deliver them right now, Lord, that the glory of the God would come in this place and they would have deliverance, that they would have freedom. Lord, and when they break through these things, God, that they will have a freedom in your presence like they've never had before. Lord, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. God, we worship you. To give all I have just to know. Jesus, there's no one beside. Jesus, forever the hope in my Now, before we close this time of prayer, we're still a little early. That's okay. Who would just raise their hand and say, you know what? I just want the Holy Spirit to refill me. I'm dry. I'm about to preach from the passage on the Valley of Dry Bones from Ezekiel. When the glory of God shows up, things change. Lord, I pray as you see these that have their hands raised, God, I pray that you would give them an infilling of your presence, that the glory of God would be in them, that they would sense your presence, that they would sense your moving in this place. God, that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the power of Almighty God has come into them. Lord, we worship you. We worship you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I'm going to move things completely out of order than how I planned, but just sensing that this is the direction that I should go with the service this morning. Usually we do communion at the end of service that this morning. We're going to do it right now as a part of worship. Unplanned. I had no idea I was going to do it here. So if I could have just a couple of people, Victoria, James, Trevor, Marcia, you're here. If you guys would just grab the plates. Those of you that are here, if you would just kind of come and get these. Those of you that are seated, if you want to come forward and pick it up, just kind of go to each aisle. Take one of each, Marcia. Jesus, Jesus. Take one of the, the tray of each. And then just go stand at the end of each aisle and then we'll just allow you guys to come. Come on, Chris, just begin to play something else for worship. Communion should be an act of worship. Everything we do in service is about one thing. It's about Jesus Christ. And the Word says that as often as you take communion, the bread and the cup, as often as you do that, Marcia, can you move a little bit further this way for me? 
As often as you do it, do it for what? In the remembrance of Jesus Christ. Now the Word says that there's only one thing that you have to do to take communion. That is you need to believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you are not a Christian this morning, don't take communion. us to do this morning. We're not going to do this corporately. You're going to do it on your own. As we continue to worship and as the Lord moves upon you, then I want you as an act of worship to take the communion that is in your hand. And if you, when you are finished, just set your cup under your seat and we will pick those up later. So as not to disturb the rest of the service. Trevor, can you also take care of the platform for me, buddy? Just as an act of worship, go ahead, Chris. Has everyone over here been served? Has everyone in this section been served? Everyone over here been served? Okay, thank you, James. The cross has taught me to live. See my heart now sings The day and its troubles shall come I know that your strength is enough all across this room. Can we just worship him and praise him one more time before you're seated? Come on, just worship him. I say this in complete humility. And I mean nothing arrogant about this. I'm saying this because we are honored and we are blessed that the presence of God has met with us this morning. But church, if you look around the church world, 90% or more of the American churches would think they were in revival if they've had what we had this morning. And that is a good thing, and we are thankful that God moves, but what it should do is it should pre help us to press in further because we want revival in this place. The only way to change our city is to have revival. You may be seated. If I could have just a few, at the end of the service, just a few gentlemen or ladies that would mind helping to collect the cups and to throw those away when we are finished. For now, just put them under your seats. We're going to go ahead and receive this morning's offering. Can I tell you, for whatever reason, May is never a good month for attendance or finances. 
So if I could, without offending anyone, just encourage you during the summer months, if you go on vacation, if you go out of town, please don't fail to send in your tithe. We still have to pay the bills. We're still trying to show the bank that we can afford the new parking lot and to do all those things. So if you can, just be faithful during those times. If you're out of town, drop it in the mail, drop it by during the week. If you're not able to come, one of us will, will always be willing. If you're not able to get out or if you're shut in at some point, we're always happy to come and pick that up from you if that works as well. Gentlemen, just go ahead. I think God's already blessed it. And I would just share a couple of things with you as they receive the offering. This evening is our life lessons, formerly known as the Young Adults uh, Life Group, and we will be at the home of Mule and Esther. Their address um, is available if you need that. Come see me or see Mule and Esther this morning. They are providing the meat dishes and we are providing the sides. Um, in African culture, a home is not blessed until you've invited friends and loved ones in to bless it with you. And so we are going into their home for the first time tonight as a group, as a family, to bless their home. Um, so please join us for that if you can. There will be prayer here for those that are not a part of that group or do not want to attend that. There will continue to be prayer here. Also, I didn't mention it earlier because of the atmosphere of worship that was in this place this morning. Um, graduates, rather than giving you a $3 book that you'll never read, uh, we are donating a, a... We're making a donation to Speed the Light in your honor. Uh, we're sending it to missions. Speed the Light is the children's, or excuse me, the youth missions organization, and we just felt like that would be a good use of that money, rather than putting it into something you won't use. But let's give it to missionaries in your honor. Um, children, you're released to go with Pastor Abby this morning.